Hi everybody, hope you're well. Today I'll take a look at a very funny book uh, titled Nagel's Guide to the Only Good Architecture in Iowa with uh, text and photographs by Daniel Nagel published by Colesidae Architectural Press. Often I'm asked what to see in Iowa. Sometimes I'm asked to show Iowa architecture to visitors. Sometimes I'm confronted with sincere assertions that there's nothing here to see and then challenged to prove these assertions false. Always I find myself explaining Iowa flyover country to those who do not know it. This guide is a collection of architectural incidences in Iowa that I like. It is my long answer to requests for showing and explaining. Nagel's Guide to the Only Good Architecture in Iowa is a deceptive title, perhaps, but it is not a misnomer. Guide is accurate. Iowa is fairly accurate. Nagel's is there because this is a personal account, one that makes no attempt to be unbiased. Nagel's qualifies good, good being not absolute but contingent and personal, and therefore a very questionable qualifier. Only is the title's uh, difficult word. Only good architecture in Iowa suggests that architecture is a scarce commodity in Iowa. A suggestion with which I would agree if uh, by architecture one means uh, high architecture. Here, however, by architecture I mean uh, good architecture. Regardless of whether or not uh, that which is built was designed by an architect or whether in fact uh, it is a habitable structure or whether it is even a building at all. Indeed, most entries in this guide are concerned uh, either with uh, vernacular works or with buildings like barns, uh, corn cribs and uh, ventilator machines that are uh, habitable tools or with billboards, uh, bridges, murals, graveyards, landscapes, silos, wind turbines and water towers that are built works but not buildings per se. Only is in the title to add irony to render questionable the assumption the title seems to assert. In a single word, uh, it initiates a debate uh, in an otherwise matter-of-fact uh, descriptive title. It predicts, I hope, the book's uh, mildly contentious but always utterly practical nature. As a guide, uh, the book is uneven. It considers only those works that I have seen in person and so shows an inordinate concern for the architectures in and around Ames and the mine, works close to where I have lived uh, for the past 18 years. It favors two works near the roads I frequently traveled. Back roads are a regular part of my life. One seldom finds uh, high architecture on back roads, but rather barns, uh, graveyards, bridges, murals, uh, power plants, sheds, uh, wind turbines, and stacks of hay. I drove the interstate highways far more frequently. Two of Iowa's three interstate highways uh, divide the state into four quadrants, and the entries in this book are organized about uh, these quadrants. These entries are followed by special sections on the state's uh, larger cities, Ames and Des Moines, uh, as uh, mentioned above, but also Iowa City, Mason City, Sioux City, Dubuque, and Cedar Rapids. Exceptional architecture immediately outside of the state, including six works in uh, Omaha, Nebraska, are also considered. Only a few towns and sites uh, were visited with the specific intention of gathering entries for this book. These are in the state's southeast corner, an area rich with wonderful buildings, but a part of the state that I previously had never visited. Each of the 226 entries offers a few facts about the work, a verbal description, and one or more critical photographs of the piece. Only the facts are innocent. The selection, images, and verbal descriptions are all highly opinionated personal reflections, as is the organization of the book, its size, shape, and color. Architecture is my hobby. It amuses me. I studied history and design for 16 years and have taught it for a quarter century. Everywhere I go, I look for architecture. I've gone to Iowa for 18 years now. Its haystacks interest me as much as its needles. Its architecture was found when I was not looking for architecture. But what is special in Iowa architecture? 
as a manner of inquiring into the nature of architecture and as a way of asking the reader to look and then uh, look again, this guide collects architect-designed high buildings and puts them together with low utilitarian buildings in the same volume. High architecture can be found in Iowa, although the works are not always the best examples of their architects. The buildings are most intriguing to me when collected together as examples of a building type, a style, or the works of a certain architect. For instance, there are the brick buildings of the Chicago master architect Louis Sullivan. Three banks, one savings and loan, a church, and a curious modern four-story department store. In Mason City, there is the unique 1912 uh, prairie school suburb, Rock uh, Crest Rock Glen. Eliel and Ero Sarinen executed a 1946 master plan for Drake University in Des Moines and later designed a number of its buildings, with Harry Wiz and Miss Van der Rohe adding buildings to Drake's campus uh, in the early 1960s. Wright's uh, Taliesin is a short drive from the northeast corner of Iowa, and there are 10 buildings by Wright in the state, including a unique mixed-use bank and inn, the truly wondrous Grant Douglas House, and three houses intended for mass production. Eliel Sarinen designed the Des Moines Arts Center in 1948 with major additions by I.M. Pei in 1968 and Richard Meyer in 1985. In Iowa City, the University of Iowa has buildings by Stephen Hall, Frank Gehry, Cesar Pelli, Odile Rowlett Scott, uh, and Gunnar Pierkets. Law architecture is found throughout the state in both uh, urban and rural areas. The best law architecture is either decidedly bizarre or an utterly prosaic, unselfconscious, unauthored architecture of implementation or the juxtaposition of the prosaic with the profound. The latter two types were never intended as statements. They facilitate and have been weathered into the landscape and are today background for contemporary building. In the frugality of their solution, without a refined palette or an aesthetic theory to guide their formation, they tell us about the nature of building buildings, about the Iowa society that built them, and about the order of the space in which we live. All photographs were taken with a digital camera in color and then converted to black and white. The book's illustrative text is critical commentary intended to raise questions about the architecture. The photographs highlight uh, those characteristics that interest me and play down those that don't. They rely on landscape to convey the aura of the depicted object, landscape being vegetation, roads, the land, uh, and the horizon line, but also the sky, the light, uh, clouds, and man-made context. It is my hope that the book offers some insight into Iowa, into high and low architectures, into the art of seeing, and into the arts of representation and guidance. It is my hope, too, that the book expresses my enthusiasm for the state's architecture as it is. Bridled, affected, questioning, contingent, and always ambiguous. Mostly, though, it is my hope that the book encourages the reader to see. What you see depends on the context, uh, on how it is uh, when you get there, on the light that illuminates it, on the age of your eyes when you perceive it. Everything changes, including you, so see it over and over again. Ask for this curious guide at your local bookstore. Thank you for joining me today and see you in the next video.